Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and today we will be solving another important question on the low level system designing. So in our last few videos we have covered some of the important topic of the system designing such as flight booking system, online food delivery system and many more. And today in this video on low level system designing we will be covering another important topic and that is the low level system designing of the Creekbus application. So it can be a QuickBus application or Creek Info or any relevant scoring application that gives a live cricket match information. So without wasting much time, let's get started and let's see how we can implement a QuickBus application. So let's first go to the application and try to first understand the application so that we can get the requirement and we can design a relevant system. So here, if you see, this is actually the QuickBus application where over here at the top you can see there are plenty of matches that are going live right now so let's open one of the match that is happening right now so here you can see this is basically what we need to implement so our applications should be capable enough to display the entire cricket match information into our system means it should be able to display the wall by wall score of each and every player as well as the complete information of the cricket match for example which two teams are playing right now who are the players those are playing right now in the matches what are the score of each and every batsman what are the statistics of the bowler and everything that is relevant for a particular cricket match so here today we have to design such a system which can give a ball by ball detail of each and everything that happened on a particular cricket match. So let's see how we can implement a low level system designing for this QuickBus application. So as you know, a low level system designing is a crucial round for any technical interview where an interviewer will give you a vague question like design QuickBus application and after that you have to discuss with your interviewer that what is the exact relevant feature he wants you to discuss and design. And based on that discussion, you have to get all the relevant requirement, both functional as well as non-functional requirement, and then you have to start with the implementation. So let's see today how we should handle a low-level system designing and you will implement an application like QuickBus. So as I've already told you in my last video, any system design question have two type of requirements. One is the functional requirement and another is the non-functional requirement. And for a low level system designing, non-functional requirement such as scalability and all these things are not considered that much because here you should design an application in the low level where you have to write the design of the code such as your code is modular enough for further enhancement. So let's see what can be the functional and the non-functional requirement for this problem. So if you see carefully into the QuickBus application, here the first thing a user want to know is like get the info of all the matches that are happening into our application. So here you can see this is one of the match that is happening right now. Here this is another one. Here this is another one and so on. So first thing first we have to list down all the matches and as well as the type of matches that are played into our system. So when I tell that what are the types means it can be a T20 match or it can be a one day match and so on. So the first functional requirement should be get the information of the type of match that is being played right now. So let's write the first functional requirement over here. Now since we got the information that these are the matches that are being played right now, let's go inside and let's see what can be the other relevant data that we have to store into our system or what can be the other relevant data that we have to show into our system. So here you can see this is basically a T20 match and here for each match there are two innings to be played. One is for team A and another is for team B. So all the relevant information of a particular innings should be kept into our system and we should be able to display it efficiently so that by seeing the data of a particular innings we can get a thorough idea that what are the things that had happened over there. So the next important requirement should be get the information of the innings that is being played. Now since we have got into a particular innings, now we have to display all the relevant score of a batsman as well as all the relevant bowling statistics 
of a particular bowler. So here we have to capture ball by ball information of what are the score that has been scored by a particular batsman as well as we have to score all the relevant information of the bowler means whether it was a dot ball or no ball or it was a wicket. So let's also keep those things as one of our requirement. So our third requirement will be ball by ball statistics. And number fourth requirement would be the score of each and every player who is playing the game. So let's list down the last one and that is detail of all the scores. So here you can see these four are the most important key functional requirement points that we have to keep in mind while designing this system. So since now we are done with the functional requirement because these four will be more or less the basic fundamental requirement for a particular Crickbus application. Now let's move on to the non-functional requirement for this application and as I have already told you the non-functional requirement will be we have to make the application scalable, reliable as well as modular so that in the future if we want to enhance the application we should be able to do so without impacting much of our existing code. So let's list down all those non-functional requirement over here. So here as you can see we have now listed down all the functional as well as the non-functional requirement for our application. Now since we have got an idea of the requirement that we are trying to build, now let's start with building the application. So the first step of building the application is we have to first find out the actors who are primarily involved in using this system. So here if you see in the Crickbus application primarily there are two type of user. One is the admin who will be updating the score for each and every ball that is being played and number two the players who are actually playing the match. So here if you see we do not have any consumer at the end because a consumer or a customer doesn't have any direct impact on this match. So there is no actor like a customer or a user who will be interacting directly into the system since it is nothing but simply a display board for the match. So let's list down all the actors who are primarily involved in using this application. So here we have listed down all the actors who will be interacting directly with our application. Now let's identify the most important thing and that is what are the primary entities that will be there into our system. So let's first go through the application and let's try to identify who are the major entity classes for our low level design. So here if you go to the application here you can see the first primary entity of our Crickbus application is the matches that are happening over here. So here you can see at a particular moment there can be multiple matches that can happen across the world. So there will be one of the entity called as matches. Next when you go inside a particular match, each match can have multiple innings to be played. For example, for a T20 match and for a ODI match, there can be two innings. But for a test match, there can be multiple innings for a particular match. So here you can see, we have identified another important entity for our Crickbus application and that is the innings. Now, if we go inside a particular innings, there are a lot of entities that we have to list down. For example, the players who are playing the match, the ball statistic means on each and every ball what had happened, the over as one of the entity and the wickets means whether it was a bowled out or it was a catch and so many information that we have to store. So let's first list down all those entity classes that we have found out useful within this implementation. So here you can see we have identified few of the important entity for our application. Now let's see how with the low level designing of each and every classes that we will be developing here, how different entity will interact with each other and how with the help of that flow we can implement the requirement that we have gathered over here. So let's start with designing the class diagram and let's first see how we can implement the low level designing of this Crickbus application. So let's start with the designing. So as you can see here we have identified our first entity and that is a match. So let's first design the class diagram of this match entity class and let's see how we can implement the low level designing of this application. So here we will write the first entity class and that is the match. Now as I have already told you particular match can have a multiple attributes or multiple information. 
So for example, the first information can be the list of innings that are being played on a particular match. So for example, for a T20 and one day match, it will be a two innings match. For a test match, it will be different. So here you can see a particular match can have multiple innings associated with it. So here a match will have a list of innings within itself. So here we will capture all those innings in the form of a list. So here we will define a Java list which will capture all the innings over here for a particular match. Now the next important thing we have to identify that what is the type of match means whether the match is a T20 or it is an ODI. So here there will be another important attribute for this match class and that is the match type. Now the next important thing for a particular match is what is the date of the match, what will be the start time of the match, what can be the end time of the match, also the location where the match has been played. So let's first identify all those attributes within this match class. So here the first thing that we will be defining is a date. That means that on what date the match has been performed. Now comes the next attribute that is team. Means what are the teams that have participated on a particular match. So here obviously there will be two teams that are associated with a particular match. Now the next thing is the time. Means the start time of the match and the end time of a particular match. And last but not the least is the location, means which country or in which ground the match have been played on. So here you can see these are the primary attribute that a match can actually have. And based on the list of these attribute, you can easily identify the details of a particular match. So here you can see we have drawn the first class and that is the match class over here. Now here you can see while we were designing the match classes, we have internally found out that it is dependent on the innings class, match type and so on. So let's now drill down into it and let's also elaborate and draw the low level designing of those classes. So the next class that I will be identifying will be the match type class. So here you can see a match type can be at most two or three types, means it can be an ODI, T20 or a test match. So since we are dealing with few constant over here, so here we will be creating a enum class for that and it will be of type the match class. And here it will have few of the data like T20, one day and the test match. So here you can see how easily with the help of a match type, we can easily identify the type of match that is being played right now. So here this will be another important class that is the match type class. So here this match type will be dependent on this class. Now let's design the next entity class and that is the location class. So let's draw the another class called as location. And here this location can have multiple attributes. For example, the name of the country where it is getting played. Next is the name of the ground where the match is being performed and so on. So here this will be the definition of the location class. Now since we have identified the match type and the location class, now let's identify the most important thing and that is the innings class because the innings class actually holds all the data that we need to show to the user for a particular match. So let's draw the most important class and that is the innings class over here. So here we will design the class called as innings. So a particular innings can have multiple data. For example, the primary data that we need to capture within this innings class are the list of player that is playing the particular match on that day. Number two, the details of all the overs that are being played means whether the first ball was a no ball or it was a six and so on. And number three, the status of the wickets means the detailed information of the fall of wickets. So let's list down all those key points over here. So the first thing first is the list of the player those who are playing the current match. So here if you understand a particular team can have many players in their dressing room but only there will be 11 players who will be playing on a particular day. So here we will be focusing mainly on the playing 11 those who are playing on that particular day. So here we will be calling that as a player instance and since there can be a lot of player within a particular innings so here it will be a list of player instance. So here we will be having a player instance class and it will list down all the players who are participating on that day. Now the next thing is like we have to capture the ball by ball analysis of the match 
and for that we have to capture all the overs that have been bold on a particular match so here there will be another attribute called as overs and obviously since the number of overs in a match can depends from 20 to 50 so here it will be a list of overs Similarly, there will be another entity and that is the wicket which will define the fall of wickets. So here this will be another list of attributes called as wickets. So hopefully this is clear to you that what will be the primary attribute for a particular innings class. So here you can see this is the class diagram for the innings class. So we have implemented all the dependencies of a match class. Now let's see how with the detailed implementation of this player instance over and wicket class we can design the low level architecture of this entire Creek Plus application. So the next important thing that we will be designing is the over class over here. So we'll create a class called as over and within this over class there will be two entities. Number one is the number of balls that have been bowled on a particular over and also the status of each and every balls. So here there will be two attribute number one is the number of balls and number two the status of each and every ball that have been bowled on that over. So here we have drawn the class diagram for the over class. Now the next important things that we have to draw is the ball class where we will be capturing all the events of the ball means what is the ball by ball analysis of a particular match. So here we will create another class called as ball class. Now let's see what can be the different attribute of this ball class. So the first attribute of a ball class will be the type of ball. Means whether it was a normal delivery, whether it's a no ball or a white ball. So for the first important key point for a ball class will be the type of ball. Next will be the speed of the ball. Number three will be who have bowled the particular ball, who have played the ball and also what was the run that was scored on a particular ball. So since here we are capturing a ball by ball instance and we are trying to capture all the information of a ball class so we have to identify all the list of attributes over here. Now the next important thing is the run that has been scored for a particular ball and the last but not the least is the wicket that have fallen on a particular ball. So it might happen that there was no wicket that have fallen on a particular ball but we have to capture that event. So if any of the instance of the run or a wicket will be empty, we can fill it with a null or zero. So here you can see this will be the class diagram of the ball class. And here you can see with the help of this ball class, we can easily identify each and everything that happened on a particular ball, on a particular over, on a particular innings. And you can see that how systematically we are subdividing our system and we are doing a low level system designing of our Creek Plus application. So here you can see we have identified the ball class from here. Now let's see what can be the last and the final thing that is the ball type over here. So the ball type will obviously will be a enum because it is a fixed type of ball with two or three instance over there and that's why it will be of type enum and the value for the ball type will be a normal ball, white ball, no ball and so on. So here you can see we have created the class called as ball type. Now before going into this player instance class, let's also draw the wicket class over here. Because player instance class will be another detailed thing to implement. So we will first focus on the wicket class over here. So the wicket class will be also a simple one. So here we will be having a class called as wicket. And here on the wicket class we can have multiple attributes. For example, who got out, who have bowled that ball and so on. So let's identify all those attributes over here. So here you can see we have identified few of the key attribute of the wicket class. Like what was the type of the wicket means whether it was a catch or it was bold or LBW whatever. And also we have identified few of the player instance class means who were directly involved for this fall of wicket. Now let's go into wicket type over here which will be another enum class and it will be also a simple enum class which will be having few of the values like hit wicket, catch, run out and so on. So here you can see we have identified almost all the classes that are required to capture each and every instance of a ball class and to give the information of a particular match. Now since we had almost done with everything, now let's also identify the last entity class and that is the player class who are actually playing on a particular team. So there will be another important class called as team 
which will have few of the attribute like the name of the team, the country on which the team belongs and also the list of players that are involved within that playing team. So as I've already told you, for a particular team, there can be multiple players associated with a team. And since here we are designing a Krigbus application, so obviously we have to keep all the historical data of each and every player. Means what was the score that has been performed by a particular player in the past, how many matches he have played and so on. So here we will be creating another class called as player. And here this player class will keep the information of everything that are required as part of our statistic. So let's list down quickly all those things over here. So here you can see there can be plenty more data that you can easily capture over here on this player class that you can easily discuss with your interviewer that what level of granular information that he actually wants you to capture. So based on the discussion you can add those attribute accordingly. So here we can see we have identified a player playing on a particular team. Now the next important thing is this player instance because as I have already told you for a particular match there will be only 11 players that will be playing and based on this player instance class we can get the information of those players who are playing and we can get the information of the scores and run he have played on that match. So here we will create a class called as player instance. And the main primary attribute of this player instance class will be the type player because obviously every player instance is of type player class. So here we will be having first attribute that is the player class and here each player instance will have multiple attributes like we have in the innings class because obviously a player have lot of data within itself means what are the balls he have faced, what are the overs he have bowled. So there will be a plenty of details of a particular player on those particular match. So let's list down all those here. So the first will be overs. Means what are the overs he have played in this particular match. Next will be the wicket. Means whether he have captured any wickets or not on a particular match. Next will be the detail of the ball. Means if he is a batsman then he will be scoring a particular run on a particular ball. So here we can capture all the ball instance. What was the score he have done on each and every balls. Also, the total score that he have done on this particular match. So, I hope these are primarily all those things that we need on the player instance classes over here. And here you can see, based on a particular match, we can easily filter out all the data that we need. Means, for a particular match, what was the location it was played, what is the innings detail, what was the fall of wicket, who have played the match and so on. So I hope this is more or less the complete low level designing of our Creepbus application. So I might have missed few of the points over here which you can discuss with your interviewer and you can easily add those points over here and you can enhance this design as and when required. So I hope you guys have thoroughly understood this video and you have found this video useful. And if you have found this video useful, do not forget to like and share with your friends. And if you are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are ready for your next interview. So see you on our next video where we will be discussing another important question on the low level designing. So see you on our next video. Thank you.